Okay. I can do this. Woke up at 6.30 this morning, put on a blazer just to feel good. Let's do this, I'm ready. Hey y'all, what's up? It's Coach Mara. Oh, sorry, that, was, that may have been a bit loud. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have some new audio equipment going on and hopefully this will sound a little bit better on your guys' end. Today's video is all about the things you'll hear in your volleyball career that nobody is gonna tell you what they mean. When I first got started in volleyball, I had to learn these on the fly. Nobody, nobody took me aside and really told me what any of these things meant. But with that, we're gonna get started. So I have it on my fancy dancy list here because I'm an A-type personality and I like lists. To start off with, we're gonna start with something. I hear a lot from coaches when they say this and it's really important because this is the foundation of volleyball and it's a rule of volleyball. So it's the term three hits. As you may or may not know, uh, in volleyball you have three hits that are legal, I almost did six, three hits that are legal in order to put the ball over the net. You can't do four, you can't do five, it's three. And normally those three hits are a bump, a set, and a spike. So when a coach is yelling at you, hey, three hits, remember three hits? They're trying to make you remember, oh, I need a pass, I need a set, and I need a spike. Next on our list is ace. Ace is something you normally hear a lot more in middle school volleyball, I find. It's that when someone gets a serve and nobody can pass it, nobody can get it back. So you basically get an ace and they'll do like a dance. So like, let me take off my slippers here. They'll do like a dance or like something and they'll go <laughs> ace or something like that. I hate it personally because it's just so obnoxious and like our team is better than yours and it's like obviously but i don't want to tell you that I'm like with a dance and everything next is the word attack line i went through this with my last team that i coached and it was weirdly hard for them to wrap their heads around because i said the word attack line and i never explained it and i don't think a lot of kids learn this so the attack line is the the, kind of like the middle line on a volleyball court. So it'll not be at the net, because the net is the, the dividing line between your side and the next side, but it's the line after that, and it's a horizontal line to cut your court kind of in a third. Next is the term backhands, and you'll normally find this with someone on your side will yell this. Backhands, the term backhands means the setter on the opposite side of the net is in what we call the back row. So normally when you see volleyball players, there's six players on the court. So there'll be three in the front by the net and three in the back by the end line or back line. Those three in the back, you rotate into those positions. So when the setter rotates into the back, there's a certain rule that you can't, if you're a setter, you can't jump. So this is really important because when a setter moves to a certain position to set a hitter, they can't jump, which means they can't tip the ball over the net themselves, which is something I'll talk about later. But it's super important because that gives you context that you shouldn't go up if the setter is near the net. And when I say up, I mean go for a block. Okay, next one is back line, which I just talked about. And the back line is just the back line of the court, the volleyball court. Again, it was really hard for my girls this year. I kept saying go to the back line and everyone assumed that I was talking about the basketball court line, like the very back of the gym. And I was like, no, you get the net, the net, the attack line, and then two thirds of the way back, you get the back line or the end line. Next is a back set. I actually bonded with my grade nine teammate who later like I played through all of high school essentially with. And we bonded over not being able to do this. <laughs> and that one of our other teammates could do really, really well. And this is called a back set. So basically when you set normally, I'm gonna make a video all about setting and how to do it properly and all that. But basically when you're setting, you're setting forward to someone else. I'm doing it kind of reluctantly here because I'm in a blazer, but you know what I mean. You're setting forward nine times out of 10, but on certain occasions, you want to set backwards. 
and it sounds as awkward as it is you have to arch your back a little more as you kind of saw there what's next what's next oh my favorite a block and subsequently a stuff block so i'll explain a block is your first line of defense against a spike or a hit from the other side so my job as a middle my favorite all-time position my job was to run to wherever the hitter was on the opposite side of the court so if the hitter was on my right i'd have to run to my right and partner with the person next to me on my side and jump at the same time and go up and press so that that ball wouldn't come over the net at all this is my favorite activity less the moving part because that part it gets really tiring really fast especially in a quick paced game but when it's middle versus middle so i'm blocking another middle player on the other side who's about to hit it is the best feeling in the world oh my gosh i can't even describe to you the sensations of when you go up you press over the net over the net not on the net because that's not allowed over the net and you block that ball and it goes straight down the other side and you guys your side gets the point oh my god it's like a new it's a new crack for me oh my god it's so good the stuff block is just that so a stuff block means there that ball is not coming over at all it's straight down on their side and you get the point a regular block sometimes you may not get that kind of full impact or coverage is what some people like to say sometimes it'll hit your finger and bounce off and your team will still have to play it so that would still be a block the one where you go up and it goes straight down the other side that is what we call a stuff block and oh, I still remember in I had my last provincial game almost ever I think it was like the second to last day or something and it was a qualifying thing for us to go into the finals and the game point for for our team to win was on this last point and this girl was like six feet tall like maybe 200 pounds like absolute monster and versus me I'm like 140 pounds I'm like 510 I'm not I'm not at all on that level but I can jump fairly high so I remember they set the ball to her and she was the middle that I was up against they set the ball to her I went up and blocked her three times the last time it was a stuff block and then that shit went straight down and we won oh so good it was so good oh my God. dig is such a fun word because it has nothing to do with really what it's talking about I think it's more to do with what it looks like you're doing. So a dig is essentially when you pass a really hard ball. Yeah, the, the, the term and the definition don't really meld great together. But I think it's named after the action because it kind of looks like you're, you have a shovel and you dig on oh, my elbow. <laughs> and if someone says nice dig, it just means like great pass, like oh, way to go. A down ball. Down ball is what we call in the industry is just a really hard ball. So normally it'll be a coach that'll kind of fling the ball upward and they will hit it at you for you to pass. It's also known as a spike, a down ball. It's the same thing. You can treat it the same way. Just nice steady platform, don't gotta do much. A dump. So remember earlier I was talking about how sometimes setters can't jump above the net because they're in, considered in the back row, in the rotation. So what dump means, which is the worst word in volleyball, I, honestly, but it's pretty accurate for the action. It's when a setter is considered front row in the rotation by the net with the other hitters. And now they have the opportunity to do something with the ball. So you don't always have to do three hits. Most coaches will say do three hits as much as possible. But sometimes the setters don't get to have as much fun because they're setting up everyone else to do all these super awesome hits that get them so many points and it's amazing, it's a great feeling. And sometimes the setters just want a piece of that. And a great way for them to do that is for something like a dump, which literally is they look like they're about to set the ball and then all they do is just 
tip it over with their hand. Okay, float serve. The thing about float serves is the unique aspect of them is that they're not very hard. So the, the part that makes them really tricky to deal with is because the ball kind of moves in the air. And I know that sounds insane because like Mara, how can a ball move through the air if you just hit it? Well, personally, I don't know. I'm not a physics major, I'm not sure. But the ball has this weird ability. So say the ball is in my hand. The ball has this weird ability of coming down from a serve and almost looking as if it's moving this way. So you don't really know where the ball is gonna be. So as a passer, you just kind of have to like engage where you think it is and just go for it. Because at the end of the day, you have no idea. Oh shit, I'm late for class. Okay, I made it, I'm back. Breezing through here. Next one is free ball or the phrase free. A free ball is a ball that is sent from the other side of the court that's fairly high and it's kind of like their last ditch effort to get it over on the third hit. So maybe something happened, like maybe someone's, someone had a bad pass and they just are scrambling on the other side and they do one hit, they do two hits, they know they have to get the ball over the net on the third hit or else it'll be four hits and that's against the rules. In a free ball, or free, would some would, someone would yell on our side, would be that last pass, that last Hail, Hail Mary shot to try and get something over the net so that their, their side can reset and refocus on what they need to do. When a free ball is sent over, it's sent really deep in the court, right? Really far back, almost to the back line. So when someone yells free or you see a free ball coming over, like, oh, last ditch ever, here we go. You have to yell free and everybody moves backwards. Ooh, next one, it's a joust. I like this term in volleyball because it feels so medieval and ha, joust, I challenge you. But to, really all this is, is when two people go up to block the ball at the same time. So I did this a lot as a middle and it was my job if I was against another middle on the other side of the court to go up and block the ball, but it's also their job to go up and block the ball. So you kind of have to get fancy a bit. So in a joust, it's when two people are pressing over the net at the same time with the ball there, of course. And normally what coaches will tell you to do is to go up and in a split second, kind of like shift your hands either to the left or to the right. So you see how I did that? It's all in your wrist. So you kind of have to keep that pressing motion and either go like this or like that. It's very subtle, but the amount of movement required isn't that big because you're just trying to get around the other person's hands that are coming at you like this. So you're trying to find a gap either to the side of them or go right over their head or through their hands. The next term is a kill. Someone will say, oh, what a kill. So a kill basically just means it's kind of like an ace, but in spiking, not in serving, if that makes sense. So if you do a really good hit or a really good spike, no one on the other side can get it. Like it goes straight down and it hits the ground perfectly and everybody freaks out and go, whoa. Someone is on your team is bound to say, what a kill. Because it just means like you killed it. Like you smashed it to the literal ground. This is the term, when I was brainstorming this video, I thought about this term like immediately. And it's the term left or right seam. When I was first starting out, I was in the back row. So I was passing by the back line with my teammates and two of my teammates started yelling left seam. And I was like, left seam? What does that mean? Luckily, I had enough time to ask this while this was all happening because the server wasn't ready yet. And they quickly told me, it was like, oh, it's whatever's on your left, you get. So out of those people in the back row, if everyone decides everything on my left, like beside my teammate, everything to my left, I'm gonna get, or everything to my right, if you say right seam, I'm gonna get, that eliminates a lot of empty space in between players, which I didn't know about. I thought this was like mind blowing, like mind boggling news. I had absolutely no idea. So whatever I would do, is if someone said left seam, I'd put my left arm out. Not like way out like this, 
but like just enough to remember because my arms are fairly close to my body whenever I'm passing. So my arms were normally really close to me and if I put an arm out to remember, hey, left seam, I'm like, okay, everything to my left because then all I have to do is take the hand closest to my chest, bring it to my other arm if it's on my left. Or if it's on my right, I do the same thing with my right arm and then it's just enough to go, to go there. And it's pretty quick, nine times out of 10. Next one, libero. A libero just means it's a purely defensive player. So all they do is take the really hard balls, the really hard down balls, the really hard serves, but liberos aren't allowed to hit, they aren't allowed to serve, and they aren't allowed to set. Some people love it. Some people love the thrill of defending their side, defending their court, like this is my space, I need to protect it. Others like me, I'm, I like passing, I like that defensive aspect, but I also like the switch into offensive really quickly. Or nine times out of 10, they're your hype man. So pay attention to them and love them. Okay, next are my positions. So the things you'll hear, middle, power, right side, and setter. Those are your four positions that you can choose from and that you can decide which one you want to be. So libero is also in this because that, that's also a position. But more so in middle school and early high school is when you start to develop these positions and it kind of like identities. So middle players like me, the best players in my opinion, my very biased opinion. <laughs> Normally we are the tallest and I'm not sure why. Like in pure honesty, I have no idea why. Shouldn't everyone be fairly tall? Anyways, if you are fairly tall, like if you are 5'8 to 5'11 as a woman, as a guy, different story, I have no idea about that. If you're fairly tall, that's where you'll probably be put or get told, hey, you'd be really good in this, this position. It's probably because you're very tall. Power is our left side hitter. So if you're looking at the net, on your team and you're standing in the middle of the court, it, your power hitter will be to your left. And they are normally the most powerful. I don't know why these are all the way they are. Nine times out of 10, they're your most powerful hitters. They're, your, they're, they're your most strategic hitters and they're the players that bring you the most points nine times out of 10 because of that power and because of that hopefully accuracy. The other one is right side. So again, if you're looking, if you're in the middle of the court, the right side is to your right. Again, very literal terms in volleyball. So they would be on your right and they are normally the ones who are left-handed or they have a trick foot or there's something unique about them. They normally get funneled to right side because lefties, I find the ones that I've coached find it easier as of an angle to hit from right side. So coming at a diagonal from the right versus coming at a diagonal from the left because it's easier timing wise. Because when the ball is coming to the left side, so to power, if you're left-handed, you have to wait till the ball kind of crosses your midline and it has to wait till it's down here and the ball kind of decreases its arc by the time it's at your hand, at your hand's highest peak, which is where you wanna hit the ball. So normally lefties will find it really beneficial to go on right side, play right side, and hit from that side because the ball will be at their hand's highest point instead of them trying to maneuver it so that they can hit it over. And setter, most important position out of everybody because without a setter, you can't do shit. Without them, you can't make anything happen. Nobody's gonna hit, nobody's gonna do anything fun because they're the ones that are making all of those decisions. They're the ones that decide who gets the ball, when they get the ball, who's playing at their peak, who needs a break, who really needs this win to get their motivation going and keep them in the game. They're the most important player out of everybody and they're nine times out of 10, the team captain. Oh, this one's fun. It's called a pokey, or maybe that's just what my coaches called it. It might be called something else, but essentially what it is, it's kind of like, distraction technique so if you can't hit the ball so if you can't spike the ball for whatever reason like the angle's weird and you're not in the right spot or something all you really need to do in that situation is make a peace sign and then curl your fingers over like it's a bunny and then just hold your fingers rock solid to where you see this flat part where your knuckles are bent 
you kind of hit that against the ball and it goes over the net. Again, it makes no sense. Like, who came up with this? But it's a pokey because you're like poking it over. Bing! Next one is a power tip. So power tip literally is exactly what you think it is. So instead of a tip where you just go like this, where you just literally tip the ball over, it's a power tip. So you take your three fingers, you basically take the ball and you kind of forcefully tip it. Like power in the tip and you just kind of push it down and you push it in a direction, but not enough to where it looks like you're gonna throw it. Like you're not holding the ball and throwing it. You're kind of just, you're tipping it, but with emphasis. Next is a rally. A rally just means kind of like in tennis when you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. If you're watching a game, your head's kind of like on a swivel. You're like, oh, wow. It's kind of like that. So it's when you your side makes a play, passes over the net to the other side. They make a play, they pass it to the other side, back and forth until somebody gets the point. That would be a rally. You'll normally hear it in, oh, good rally, what a rally, stuff like that. Shank. I said this a lot uh, when I was coaching. I find some girls can kind of pick up on it and they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because it's kind of a gnarly word and kind of rugged and like, mm, like something went wrong there. Like who created this? That's kind of the, the feeling with the action that's involved with this. So a shank is normally when you pass a ball and you want it to go to your setter, like you honestly want it to go there but something happens, like either your arm moves or maybe the ball was at a weird angle and it goes off your arm and it goes to the side or it goes behind you or it goes somewhere else. That's called a shank. It's kind of gnarly, it's kind of weird, kind of like, ah, what happened? And then the last one, the last one, side out. This was the other term that I just, I could never understand. Nobody explained it to me and then someone said it to me and I actually asked my coach one day, I was like, what does this mean? And she's like, oh, don't know this? Oh, it just, it's like a positive reinforcement. So like say your team's doing really badly. Essentially that term will be said by our coach like, okay, okay, side out, side out. That normally just means focus, take a breath. You got this, make a pass, you can do it. But that is officially everything I have and everything I can think of. Please, if you any of you have played volleyball, leave any more terms, words that I may have missed down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on social media. I will leave my Instagram in the description box below. And with that, that's all we got for y'all today. So I'll see y'all in my next video. Good job, team. <laughs>